Hello, welcome to Kate's Egg. Today I am in the baler again. It's so much fun to drive. It's got electronic steering, so it's very sensitive to movement. What's amazing about this whole experience is I was in this exact field combining. Now I'm bailing my straw rows that were behind my combine. It's super awesome, and I'm having a great time. I just picked my baler up, and I'm making my turn to start another row, just like I would in the combine. race car you can go six miles an hour it is crazy I've never driven a tractor with this type of transmission before I have to make sure to keep it even in the row I've got two Kate's egg tote bags with me today this one and this one because I couldn't fit everything in one Kate's egg tote bag I've got one baler in front of me in the field so if I have any problems I'm thankful that I've got a radio and someone can help me. I have very little experience driving this type of tractor and I've never failed before, so it's all a learning experience. A huge thank you to Ivor for giving me the opportunity to run this awesome tractor and baler. I've got an image of how the baler works on here and also I get arrows pointing to which direction I should drive to make sure I'm straight down the center and picking up all of the straw, which is good. And it's really important we do pick up all this straw and don't leave any in the field because my dad would have to burn it. Can't seed through it. So if there's any extra on corners or anything like that, I always pick it up. I must be going faster than the other baler because I keep catching up and don't notice it. Maybe I should go a little bit slower because if he's driving slower, it probably means I should too. He has a lot more experience than I I do. You can turn pretty sharp corners with these. Not too sharp, but sort of sharp. Oh, he has to fix another twine again. So I guess I am passing him this round. Oh, that was pretty bumpy. We're going across the furrows right now. Furrows in the field are the little rows from planting your wheat, and it's always bumpy going across furrows. this up. I'm going to drive around this to my next row, which will be here. Oh, I probably shouldn't have driven on that. I accidentally drove on a straw row, which was not good. I'm going 5.6 miles an hour right now. I'm keeping this box black, which I can't remember what it means, but I know I need to keep it black. Oh, the black box means the plunger to create the leaf in the bale, the flake, it has to stay black so it continues plunging and it doesn't stop. This has done 787 bales. I just lined up to my next pass. I have this little button right here that I push down to drop the baler back in. It's run on hydraulics, kind of just like when I was seeding in the drill. I don't think I would have felt nearly as comfortable on this baler if I hadn't run the drill this year, just because it's got the hydraulics, everything like that. I'm a lot more comfortable with different pieces of equipment and driving tractors specifically after running the 530 horsepower tractor pulling our flex coil drill. I had driven tractors before and run them, but never as long hours as seeding and as much as seeding. So that really prepared me for this. If I see a rock, I'll lift it up slightly and then put it back in the ground. I definitely noticed the straw rows going like this. I'll be trying to drive perfect lines next year in combine. So when I come to bail, I don't have to drive in a zigzag pattern. It's nice to be in these fields to seed, combine, and then bale. All of the fields I combined and harvested this year, I'm now baling. I cannot believe it. I definitely feel like a race car driver in these tractors. It is awesome. There's a coolie in the field here, so I'm going to slow down so everything goes through smoothly. I get a little blue dot on my screen here on the picture of the baler when it's tying a knot, so that's awesome. 
now I'm letting the baler go through and picking it up and now I'm starting my turn. It doesn't take nearly as long to pick up as the drill did for seeding. My dad said I drove my combine like a go-kart and this kind of feels like a go-kart when you're driving it. So I really like that. It's very bumpy here. With these really expensive big pieces of machinery, you wanna be very, very careful when you go through dips and treat them very well because you want them to last as long as they can. I'm very conscious of that when driving any piece of machinery because it costs a lot to replace them. And if you take good care of them, they should last you a long time. Even though my tractor's reached the end of the straw row, I have to make sure the baler has before I pick it up and make my turn. Oh, I left a bale in that row. Very nice. Now I'm lining up to my next straw row. It's harder to tell where the straw rows are than where the wheat was, but I look for the straw row and then I look for the bale next to it. So if I see a bale in the row, directly next to it and no bales in this row, it's probably the next straw row. I have all these monitors, even more than I did seeding. This is an awesome tractor. I feel very lucky to drive it. Here I have where I put it in forward, that moving the lever to the middle here would be neutral and then moving it down here would be park. I have this for my RPM. This black roller controls my speed. This is the hydraulic for the baler to go up and down. And then this is my PTO over here. And then this is my whole screen and monitor for the baler. This is my information for my tractor. I'm running between 2000 and 2080 RPM and I'm going 5.6 miles an hour. I've got half a tank of fuel. Ivor ran this baler all night long because the moisture was good and he said they usually don't work that long. When you have a good day, you want to go as long as you can because some days you can't start until noon. I've got a bale that's getting pretty close to falling off here. It's at 91 inches of 102 inches is what it was set at. So that bale ended up finishing at 101 one inches in length when it dropped off so it's fun to look at the monitors and tell our swather header is 35 feet wide so each pass was from a 35 foot swath These are actually pretty heavy straw rows. The straw looked really huge. The wheat didn't fill out. Towards the end of our growing season we had a drought and that's when the filling of the heads would happen. And our last rain is usually to fill the heads of the wheat and produce all those kernels. So we have a huge crop of straw because we got good rain in the beginning of the growing season, but no wheat heads because we didn't get any rain when they needed to fill. So we didn't get much wheat from these swaths, but we got a lot of straw. You definitely feel like you're getting a lot more done in the baler than in the combine or drill because you can go a lot faster. Well, actually, the combine, you feel like you're going so slow. The drill, you feel like you get to go super fast. And then to be in the baler, you feel like you're just the fastest in town. I like to look at my row and make sure I was picking everything up and doing a good job bailing. I'm trying to do the best I can at running this baler. We've got the other one going down the other side and this whole setup swivels. So the monitor, all the buttons, the seat like this and it's a super easy swivel. It's not a hard one like my drill. So it's nice to be able to look at your monitor, look at your baler, have a little bit more room with your feet to stretch, and look at your speed, and then also it's important to look out front of the window to drive the tractor. Get one arrow if I need to move over a little bit to the left, for example, and two arrows if I really need to move over, and three if I need to move over a lot. You really get to know your fields when you seed them, harvest them, and bale them. So three times this year I've been in this field. Now I'm making my turn, which this steering wheel is so much easier to turn than my dad's tractors and combine. I want to line up to the straw row. We're getting to the end of this field, so the passes along the width of the field are a lot smaller. I just set my baler down and I'm about to pick it back up again. Running a variety of machinery really helps to be an overall good driver. 
It looks like we'll have to move the balers to a different field soon, so it'll be interesting. It's awesome I have the opportunity to bale our own field of straw. Whoops, I need to go a little bit this way. The average weight of the bales coming off this baler have been 1,058 pounds, and the last bale that came off was 1,037 pounds. I just got a beep and a little blue dot on the screen, so that means the bale was nodding and it just dropped off the back. I didn't check to see how long that bale was. I'm starting to get a little bit of a feel for the baler. You don't have to steer nearly as often as I have been steering to keep it straight down the center. It's incredible to see all the bales in the field. Oh, and there's no more side passes left, so. Oh, there's only one pass left in this field. I get the very last pass. Wow. Oh, no, there's one more. The other one you can barely see though because it was a half swath, so there's very little straw in it. And if you go to my Swathing 2021 video, you'll be able to see why we have to do a half swath on the last pass. And it's basically so that we don't have to drive over another swath because it doesn't line up quite correctly and we don't have a swather that can shoot the swath off to the side. I guess I'll get to experience moving balers to a different field. This is such a small piece of equipment too. It's kind of nice to not have to worry about a huge long drill or a huge combine. Although it's not very small. It's smaller than what I'm used to. The baler was nodding. I just finished my last straw pass in this field. So I'm going to wait for the other baler to come to the end and figure out what to do. Right there you can see what happens when the bale falls apart behind the baler and the twine doesn't correctly knot. We come and pick those back up later. I'm not sure where to go next so I'm waiting for our other baler. Okay, thank you. Now we are moving fields. So, where is that on the screen? So just in front by that corner post where your speed is. Oh, did you say fuel gauge? Yep. Just under halfway. Okay, I should have lost them. I'll just fuel up here. So we are going to fuel the tractors up. I was done with the one section here. So I'm going to jump over and I'll spread. Maybe it won't be too long. Shit, we're going to go to another field. No, we're going to do that one uh, Kinder Hay bottle last night. I'm hoping it's dry enough. They're deciding what field we're moving to next. Another bale count's looking back, my guy. I'm at 756. Where are you at? Just under 800. I'm at 812 bales. So you're beating me, eh? I wasn't bailing all night like everyone else, though. I'm here with Ron, and you drive baler for Ivor. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's and thank you cool. for helping me fuel up. Yeah, that's a problem. And then we're moving fields. Yep. Well, that will be very exciting. Thank you. Yep. Break. Ron helped me fill up with fuel, so thank you. And now we are headed to the next field, which is also my dad's. And we will be roading there with the baler. It's crazy that we're going to the new field with a bale on the back. I am going 20 miles an hour right now. Now I'm going 27 miles an hour which is probably the speed I'm going to stay at. Make sure everything's good with the baler. Slow down a little bit because I'm coming up at a crossroad. This radio channel is hilarious. Oh my gosh, Ronnie. We are roading the balers 30 miles an hour. Do you have to give an estimate of how many bales you think we've done all together um, from yesterday to now? About two, five, 2,500, how much? Oh shit, we're way over that. 3,000 3, bales since yesterday. Wow. I just turned my hazards on because I had forgot to. I'm on the highway now, which is a little nerve wracking. Hey, I love it. It's very fun. I'm maxed out on my speed at 33.1 miles an hour. Watching my mirrors behind me so I can move over a little bit if someone is behind. We're going to take our next left here to this farm yard. It's a lot simpler to road these than combines and drills, so this is really nice. I remember roading my combine up to this field to harvest it. 
definitely had to slow down for that. There was a lot of mud there, so, whoa, I didn't mean to do that. So I drove around it. I didn't want to get stuck. Oh my goodness, there's deer running through the field. Oh wow, no, there's antelope. Did I ever teach you how to uh, start that PTO up? Yes, he did, thank you. Okay, let's get a rock in the room. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe to learn more about how your food gets to your table. You can also follow Kate's Egg on Instagram, K-A-T-E-S underscore A-G, and on Facebook, Pinterest, and TikTok. Make sure you're following my official TikTok, K-A-T-E-S underscore A-G. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!